it, there's no safe way to do the kettlebell swing. Is it- hmm. There's no safe way to do a kettlebell swing. Gregory from Lippestock here. We're all about kettlebells. So if you are into kettlebells, then like the video and consider subscribing. Charles Poliquin, God rest his soul, he died in 2018, must be respected for his contribution to the strength training and fitness world. I myself have watched some of his content. On some areas, I disagree. I didn't follow him as closely because then I've switched into other areas. But when highly intelligent people say something that even contradict your own views, you have to listen. And that's what I want to do. I want to listen what he says about kettlebell swings. And then we can take it from there and I'll give you my perspective. With the kettlebell swing, do you think that kettlebell swings are harmful? Well, I, I guess I'm curious, the... Um are they harmful in any tech given any technique for the swing or is part of the harm from say a kettlebell i'm sorry a crossfit box in the way that they perform the kettlebell swing there's no safe way to do the kettlebell swing is it- hmm. there's no safe way to do a kettlebell swing i strongly disagree We see it from Pavel, we've heard it from Professor McGill, we've seen it in our coaching and we experienced that it sometimes even is beneficial when people do the kettlebell swing. Now it may be, and that's what I learned from Professor McGill, is that some people may have sheer sensitivity. So their spine may be susceptible to sheer forces. And that's what's happening. That's what's happening with the kettlebell swing. There are sheer forces involved and some people do not tolerate them or they have problems with it. So I think there's two ways. You can either try to engineer out those sheer forces with tensing your spine, using the Valsalva maneuver when you breathe or the power breathing method just to make sure that you protect your spine. Or maybe if it is a very tough case, which I must say we have never experienced, then maybe you have to let go of the swing or maybe you do it like Funk Roberts. You do a some of some kind of modified version to really protect your spine from those sheer forces. But maybe there are people who, and that's what even Professor McGill says in his kettlebell swing study, for some people it may irritate tissue. So if it irritates tissues, even though you apply the perfect technique and perfect form, maybe the swing is not for you. And I believe in some cases, some exercises are not made for everybody yet i haven't experienced that yet but it may be that i will experience this further down the road for example in my case a heart style swing is tough on my spine when i do it a single hand with left with my left hand single handed heart style swing then i feel it with my right hand i don't feel it and i try to engineer it out as much as possible and I'm successful at it, yet in some cases, some people are not. But saying that there's no way to do a kettlebell swing safely, like Charles Poliquin said now, I think hmm, I really disagree with this. In the lumberjack, the bar is moved vertically, not into a swing process. So people say, well, you recommend the lumberjack. Yeah, but the lumberjack is like a different load pattern for the power snatch. The same movement pattern as in the kettlebell swing, but you have a different grip, you have it weighted, and then you throw it up like Charles Poliquin said it is a loading pattern for a power snatch so I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to weightlifting power snatches and stuff like this with barbells so I think he uses it for programming yet the loading is pretty much the same so I don't see the difference yes you might program it differently but you still do almost the same movement pattern. Klokov and I were talking about this when they asked us about the kettlebell swing. The goal in weightlifting is to lift the most weight in the most vertical way. Mm-hmm. So the, the the best way to lift a lot of weight is to actually keep the weight in a straight line. Mm-hmm. The more horizontal displacements there is to the bar, the, there's more wasted effort and less weight is lifted. So, you know, that has been studied in biomechanics for years. There's no... There's no two ways about it. Now, 100%, I do agree. The most weight 
or being able to lift the most weight means that the weight has to stay close to your center of mass. As soon as you move outside of that center of mass, you're not able to lift a lot of weight. That's why we say, for example, when you deadlift, as soon as you move the bar or the, or the kettlebell in front of you, it gets not only impossible to lift a lot, of, a lot of weights, but it's also dangerous for your lower back. Yet what I don't see is the correlation to the dangers of a kettlebell swing. Now, yes, you're not able to move a lot of weight outside your center of mass, but depending on how you do the kettlebell swing and depending on how much weight you're lifting, you're shifting your body weight a little bit. We always say when you're swinging, if you go too far outside your center of mass, then you're probably doing it wrong. Yet, where's the correlation? Yes, a lot of weight is lifted when you stay inside your center of mass, but what does that have to do with the kettlebell swing? Not everybody wants to lift massive amounts of weights. I do understand it 100% from a weightlifting perspective or a powerlifting perspective, but in that case, you could use the kettlebell as a supplemental exercise to maybe strengthen your connective tissues or whatever, and then you go back to your regular lift. So that's the idea of GPP and SPP. What I don't like about the kettlebell swing is that the, the weight displaces a weight from the dish not the, in squatting hmm? what i don't like about the kettlebell swing is that the weight moves away from the center of mass probably yeah it's not close to the disc in squatting what with all due respect i don't see what he doesn't like about the kettlebell swing other than the fact then you move the weight outside your center of mass yes but this may be beneficial because then you engage in a hinge pattern and the kettlebell lends itself so well to the hinging movement pattern. It stretches and engages your hamstrings, your glutes and your lower back in a very harmonious fashion, which can be beneficial not only to back pain, but also can be beneficial to performance. Yeah, I, I, I don't see it. L like I mentioned, I do understand, yes, you can move lots of weights outside your center of mass, but the, the kettlebell swing has a different goal. So I think it depends, it's context specific. So yeah, I don't really get it. Uh, or snatches or clean jerk, the bar always stays close to the center of gravity. Yeah, got it. <laughs> got it, Tim. <laughs> well, and then comparing barbells with kettlebells and dumbbells. That's like, I love this analogy. Comparing a knife with a fork and a spoon, okay? You're mad that you cannot eat the steak with the spoon and then you throw away the spoon and you're like, the spoon is useless when in reality, you're just using the wrong tool. Hmm. Yeah, comparing these training modalities is a tricky thing and yeah. No backup, and this is where it stops, right? So with all due respect, I don't see where Charles Poliquin comes from. I don't think he has a, no a lot of knowledge base when it comes to kettlebell training. And he doesn't back up his claims with something that is so valid that we have to think about it, right? And Tim, I mean, Tim is an avid kettlebell user. So it would have been interesting if Tim would have not challenged. I don't like the way challenging somebody because when you have a podcast and a conversation it's not about attacking or challenging each other what i love is not a debate but a dialogue tim could have said like okay if we can jump a little deeper because i love kettlebell swings i don't understand charles what you are trying to say right now could you back it up a little bit more and really make it clear for me to understand as to why kettlebell swings seem dangerous because from my perspective and from what I've learned and from the teachers and instructors, uh, sing, swings can be so safe in most cases. So let's get Pavel Satsulin's opinion about this. I have seen that in the Strong First Forum, somebody asked this question and shared what Charles Poliquin said. And Pavel says, Cyrus, so he talks to the guy who asked the question or the gal, no exercise is perfect for everybody, but the swing comes pretty close. I love it. At least when it's performed the way we teach it. Over 14 years of my kettlebell certifications, we have received countless reports of improved back health and performance. Kettlebell Simple and Sinister has been endorsed by number one biomechanics in the world, Professor Stuart McGill, and leading PT expert Greg Cook. So we cannot forget, it's not only Professor McGill, it's also Greg Cook from Functional Movement Systems. So these are heavyweights. 
Among SFG instructors, you will find chiropractors, MDs and PTs who not only coach the swing for performance, but use it in rehabilitation. I love what he says here. Get cleared by a doc and enjoy all the benefits the swing can deliver. So I'm 100% on Pavel's side. 90 Days of Kettlebells is an online workout course for beginners who want to train at home, lose weight and achieve lasting results without wasting time and money with crash diets and unused gym memberships. The program works as follows. You will do three kettlebell workouts per week that gradually increase in difficulty. You'll also build three powerful eating habits that have proven successful in our coaching. As the name implies, the program lasts 90 days and you will have lifelong access after purchase. We also include live accountability sessions where you will publicly state your goals. Psychology shows us that if we make our goals public, our adherence to the process and the program increases dramatically. If you have been struggling to put together an elaborate kettlebell workout system while trying to lose weight, then 90 days of kettlebells is for you. The price of 90 days of kettlebells is 59 US dollars per month for three months and you can save 20% with a one-time payment of 147 US dollars. We'll open registration only to a small number of new clients. Join the waiting list now to get access 24 hours before the general public. Link is in the description.